Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to be talking about IV fluids. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and also check out our website, ninjanerd.org, where you can get our notes and lecture illustrations for all the videos that we put up on YouTube. Let's get into it. So when we talk about IV fluids, we're going to specifically be talking about the crystalloids. And we're going to be talking about why we give our patients and how this works. Remember that when we give IV fluids, we're specifically giving it to our patient when they have trouble maybe taking it in orally any type of fluids, or they need some type of rapid infusion, or if they need some type of electrolyte imbalance or anything else that's going on that we want to rebalance for them. So when we're giving them fluids, we need to talk about how does this happen? How does the fluid go into the body, go into the cell, and help our, our patient out? And when we give someone fluids, we're specifically going to be talking about the process of osmosis. We're going to be giving them an IV intravenously or through whatever other type of access point that they have, and we're going to give them fluids through that. And when we do that, we are going to be talking about how that fluid goes into the vein, into the body, and then into our cell. That process is called osmosis. And we want to understand that osmosis is the movement of water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from a low to high concentration. And you're probably like, whoa, this is a lot of information already. Too fast, let's slow it down. Think about it again. Osmosis is the movement of water, right? When we give our patients crystalloids solutions, they're mostly made of water. And what we're looking at here is that water movement through a semi-permeable membrane, meaning some things will move through and some won't. And we're going from a low concentration to a high concentration, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind, low concentration to high concentration. And you're probably like, uh, this still doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand what hypotonic is, what isotonic is, what hypertonic is, and I don't understand what you mean by low concentration to high concentration. So the way I remember it, and the way it's easier for me and engineer nerds, is to look at the solution versus the cell. So for every single one of these, we're gonna write down solution versus the cell because that allows me to remember, okay, if I'm going from a low to a high and I have this solution versus the cell, then I'm gonna be able to figure out how this is moving and how this is affecting our cell. Because remember, when we talk about the movement of water, our cell is always constant within our body. It's gonna be our constant for us. And we're gonna look at the fluid based upon that constant. Let's first talk about hypotonic. Hypotonic, the word hypo meaning low, tonic meaning tonicity of the solution, so we have a low concentration, right? So when we think about this cell, we're gonna be thinking about our low versus cell, right? And when we look at low versus cell, right? Solution versus the cell. Our hypotonic is a low, low versus our cell. We said that the low concentration goes to the high concentration. So we have a low that's gonna go to the cell. In this right here, we already know what's going on. We know hypotonic is a low concentration and it's gonna cause our cell to swell, right? And when it swells too far and bursts, we can have lysis and we don't want that to happen. So what are some solutions that are hypotonic? We have three of them right here. I want you to look at that. We have a 0.45 saline, 0.225 saline, and a 0.33 saline. These are all solutions that we can give, but we don't typically call them in the nursing setting. We call them either half normal saline or quarter normal saline or third. Okay, and that's NS. And when we give our patient this, we're typically giving it to them for someone who has something like cellular dehydration. They're dehydrated and we wanna make sure we're giving them their fluid back. And as we give that fluid back, it's gonna go into the cell. So if you're looking at this diagram here, we have all this extracellular fluid, and we have a lot of water right outside the cell. And inside the cell, we have a lot of different solutes. And what we're looking at here is to move this water into here, because what is this? This water, water likes to follow salt, right? And typically with our body, we're looking at lots of salt type of molecules. So water, is obsessed with salt and it says, hey, there's a lot of salt inside that cell. I'm gonna go follow, I'm gonna go right in there. And as that water goes in, it pushes the cell, makes it swell. And then we have a swollen cell, something that is a little more bigger than what it normally is. Because of that, you know that hypotonic makes the cell swell. You're not gonna wanna give it to your patients with intracranial pressure, right? That is increased. 
that increased intracranial pressure, they already have some swelling. They already have some pressure in that brain. And if you're going to be swelling all those cells, you're going to create more pressure, and that's not good. Let's move on to our isotonic. With our isotonic, again, we're going to go back to solution versus cell. What does the word iso mean? Iso means equal, right? So we have iso versus cell. And we know that iso means equal, so we have iso is equal to cell. So what does that mean? Does that mean there's going to be any movement? Absolutely not. So because we have the isotonic, we have an equal concentration, and we have no change, this is just going to be giving us then, in our patients, increased extracellular fluid. So they're going to have more fluid available, but they're not going to be changing any type of shaping within the cells. So some of those fluids that we have available that we can give our patients is our 0.9 normal saline. We can give them our lactated ringers, commonly referred to as LR our 5% dextrose in water, also known as D5W, and our 5% in 0.225 normal saline, or our 5% in one-third normal saline. I mean, sorry, one-fourth normal saline. Remember, when we give these fluids, and for the NCLEX, when we see a test, and we're like, hey, a test question, and we're like, hey, I want to give this patient an isotonic, or I want to, am I going to give this patient this fluid, because the question's asking me, these uh, fluids right here are based upon what it is doing at the time of it entering the body, not 10 minutes after, not when it's being metabolized, just for the state of what it is in the bag as it goes into the body. So these are all considered isotonic or equal to our cell. So why are we giving these to our patients? We're just going to be increasing their extracellular fluid. So what we want to do is to give it to our patients that have had some type of volume loss. They've either lost some blood, they've dehydrated from vomiting, diarrhea, or they've had some type of surgery and they're gonna get volume loss. And if you think about that in your nursing clinicals, and you think about that when you're at the bedside, typically when a patient's in pre-op, they're gonna be getting some fluids. Typically a patient who has some blood loss, they're gonna be getting normal saline, maybe with something else going on like red blood cells. Last thing we're gonna talk about here is hypertonic. Now remember with hypertonic, again, we're gonna go back, solution versus cell, solution versus cell. Keep getting that in your head. I think this works the best. So we know that hyper, means like excess or a lot. So we got hyper versus cell. So what does that mean? Hyper, oops, I can't spell hyper, there we go. So we got hyper versus cell. So what's happening here? Low to high, right? So hyper is bigger than the cell, so we're gonna go out of the cell into this fluid. So remember, hypertonic is a high concentration and our water that's in the cell is obsessed with all that salt that's outside the cell, so it's gonna move out. So as it moves out, our cell starts to shrink. What are some of our hypertonic solutions or fluids that we can give? We can give our 3%, 5% saline, we have our 10% dextrose in water, our 5% dextrose and our 0.5 normal saline, our 5% dextrose and our 0.45 normal saline, or 5%, or 5 dex in half normal saline, and then our 5% dex in LR. All of these typically should be given with a central venous catheter. There are outstanding circumstances that maybe you wanna get it in quicker and that's not readily available, but they can cause some issues with the patient. But when we give these fluids, we are giving them because of somebody who maybe is hyponatremic or they have some type of cerebral edema. Think about it, think about what's going on. We have swelling of these cells, right? Maybe the cells are too big and we wanna bring them down to a, back to a normal state. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that fluid out of the cell, okay? Back into our extracellular fluid. So if you look at this picture here, we have a lot of water that was in the cell and it wants to move out. A lot of water in that cell, a lot more of any, all of our concentration outside of the cell in that hyper tonic solution. So if you see a lot of stuff outside the cell, water is going to move out. As it moves out, it starts to shrink. All right, so that is our hypo, isotonic, and hypertonic solutions. Remember, Ninja Nerds, I want you to keep into your head solution versus cell because I think that works the best. Don't forget that water is always obsessed with salt, so where there is more salt, water is going to follow, and that's our process of osmosis. I hope this made sense, and as always, until next time. Thank you.